Okay, today we're going to finish off chapter 8 by doing 8-4. Eight, 8-4 four. Eight, four deals with um, triangle proportionality, uh, the kind of various, the various um, proportionality theorems that we use with triangles. So, at the top of page 238 of your student journal, there's some information about corresponding angles, ratio, and proportions. We've went through each of those. You can summarize those as it relates to these theorems as... Uh, as we progress, but I want you to take a look at the first two theorems, the triangle proportionality theorem and its converse. Okay, kind of read through it, summarize it in your own words. Okay, so for the first theorem, and you guys, as we go through these, you'll notice you can write proportions in different ways. Okay, but this theorem states that if TU is parallel to QS, okay, then this length right here, QT, is to TR as SU is to UR. Okay, so this is to that as that is to that. You just make up two fractions, which make a proportion, and you're good to go. Now, um, I've seen it approached in different ways. Okay, there's that proportion that the book actually gives you. So if you cross multiply, you're actually multiplying TQ by RU. So you're multiplying this link right here by that link right there. It's almost like thinking of terms of spaces. You have this over this and that over that. Right? Everyone see the proportion? Okay, how many are with me right now? Okay, so please note that this says this actually says RT is to TQ. It kind of goes at it goes about it in a different way. But if you cross multiply, I want everyone I want everyone to cross multiply that and get your get your equation right there on your own paper right now. Okay, what do we get? QT, UR, okay. Everyone agree? Maybe not in that order, but good. Okay, I want you now to take this proportion, write it as a proportion. Not Obviously, the way I wrote it up here is not the same as the way they wrote it down there. They actually said that is to that as that is to that. I'm saying that is to that as that is to that. Okay? I want you to write that proportion out that I just set up there. Okay, so we have QT over SU and TR over UR. Now, let's go ahead and cross multiply those and write that equation. What do you notice? Exact same thing. Okay, so there are different ways to form these proportions, and usually you're going to see it the way they wrote it, but there's occasionally you're going to see it the way that I just wrote it there. They have the same proportionality, okay? It's up to you how you memorize it, but just note that really what you're saying, and if you tilt, and I don't have a better picture of this now, but if you tilt that triangle kind of up that way, so if you were to turn your book right now, the way they're comparing they're comparing big triangle. So notice there's a there's parallel lines within the triangle. They're comparing this side is to that side as that side is to that side. Everyone see that? So they're comparing it this way. It's okay to do as well. And I hope I didn't make a big confusion there. I'm trying to show you how um, both will work. All right. And this just kind of goes in the converse of it, the next one. Good? All right. 
So let's take a look at the next one. Three parallel lines theorem and the triangle bisector theorem. All right? So I want you to read through both of those. Okay, now I'm going to turn the paper like this because I like to look at my parallel lines horizontally. And it also helps me with the proportion they're saying, kind of like the previous one. U dub is to WY, that's this is to that, as VX is to XZ. So if you have your parallel lines, the, the um, segments that are formed by parallel lines intersecting transversals, those segments are proportional. Okay, so that is to that is that is to that. Now there are other ways we can write this one as well, but really that's what they're saying. So if you can think of, like if I gave you parallel lines in this format, and some transversals, okay, we could see, and I labeled that A, and that B, and that C, and that D. I want you to write your, oops, that has to be actually be a D. I want you to write your proportion from that. So if you can identify the, hor the lines horizontal like this, it's really as simple as doing this. There's your proportion. A is to B as C is to D. Okay. Now, did anyone do it a different way? If you did it a different way, note, note how you can check it. D times A is, duh. And then B times C is, because, okay? So we got DA equals BC. If you did it a different way, cross multiply and see if you get the same statement. If you did, then your proportion's still fine. Okay. Did anyone do it differently? Get the same statement? Okay, no. Good. Okay, this next one. I actually do, I compare mine differently, but this one's saying AD, so it's saying this, is to DB, which is that, as CA is to CB. It's a proportional. So, so if I were to, sometimes it's helpful rather than having the multiple letters to kind of do what we did here and just label them A, B, C, and D, or in this case maybe W, X, Y, Z. So if I say this is linked W, this is linked X, this is linked Y, and that's linked Z, I could say Hey, that proportion is, to the, or that ratio is to that ratio. That's really what they're saying there. I personally usually look at it the other way. I usually look at it as y is to w as z is to x. Yeah. It would, yeah, because if you cross multiply the other, uh, you don't have the same thing. So if you're wondering if a proportion works like, um, like, well, let's just go with what they have here. We got AD to DB. So if cross multiply, that gives you WZ and XY. So if you're wondering if a proportion works, label them and cross multiply and see if you get the same thing. In that case, you wouldn't. We'd have a factor. Okay. All right. I know it's exciting stuff. Some of you are so excited. We're having a hard time staying awake. All right, let's go ahead and try number one and two on page 239. Okay, so for those of you who are uh, struggling on this, you're like, oh my gosh, all these proportions. Let me try to simplify it really quick. If you, if you see parallel lines, here's how I look at it. This is how I remember them. I don't remember all those little pieces right there. I look at it like this. Number one, those are my parallel lines. Split your parallel line. 
5 is to 10 as, if I label this x, x is to 6. There's my proportion. It really is that simple if you identify the parallel line. So in that case, you get 30 equals 10x, so x equals 3. Now, obviously, you don't want to turn your paper like that. All right? Now, if, if you go back to this page right here, that's, they said RT is to TQ. There's your parallel lines. That's all they're doing. Okay. Same thing on this one. Identify the parallel lines. You look at it. You have 2 is to 9. So if it helps, turn your paper again. Call that X. 2 is to 9 as 7 is to X. Or, not, excuse me, 9 is to 2 as 7 is to X. Questions? Cool? Take a look at the next two. Now it says determine, determine whether AB is parallel to XY. So in other words, now they're asking, hey, is this parallel to that? Is this one parallel to that one? It's kind of a big question mark right now. We don't know. Hey, what do you think? First one? No, it would have to be 3 is to 4 is 4 is to 5. That is not true. Yeah, that would be like 7.75 to 0.8. Yeah, nope. Okay. This one would be 6 is to 4 as 7.5 is to 5. And for sure, okay, they both reduce to 3 halves. Or 1.5. Or if you cross multiply, the other way to do it, for those of you who use your calculator there, the other way to double check that is just cross multiply. That's 30, and that's 30. If they're proportional, you'll get the same number when you cross multiply. 30 equals 30. Pretty new to man. All right, any questions so far? Okay. Five through seven, give it a go. Okay, so this little piece is to this big piece as this little piece is to that big piece. Next one, XY. So this little piece right here is to YZ as V, or what is to V dub. That would have to be UV. And the last one, WU to WV, WU, it's a long guy here, is to WV, short guy, is as to what is to ZY, so we'd have ZX. Total yay. All right, how many got them? Okay, the last part. They do not have parallel lines. However, you guys, really, my the, por the proportion I use on this, I know they do it differently. They showed it differently in the book. I just do this. It seems much easier. Okay, 9 is to x as 15 is to 5. x equals 3. Now that's a little tougher on this one, right? Because you have 9 is to b, 
as 6.75 is to right but you want to you want to express this length in terms of b tell your neighbor how you can express this length in terms of b in other words use b anyone think they got it Uh, not b divided by 9. No. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it's this whole length minus 14. So we take the whole length of 14, and then we go back b units. So 14 minus b brings us to here. So we'd have 6.75 is to 14 minus b. Make sure your b's are b's and not 6's, right? Otherwise, that becomes a little confusing. So when you're cross-multiplying here, you have 9 times the quantity, 14 minus b, equals 6.75 b's. Dude, this be a cool problem. Good job, Akil. 14 times 9, anyone do that in their head? 126, yeah, it's 140 minus a 14, 126. 9 times B, 9B. Okay, 126 equals 15.75 Bs. And B, B, what? Yes, be aggressive and solve the problem. B, B, 8. Hey, BB-8. <laughs> All right, forget it. Come on, man. No, BB. Hey, that be the answer. All right.